channel to update the latest information. We are QTN. The situation in Ukraine's battlefield has escalated significantly, with major Ukrainian offensive operations taking place, leading to fierce clashes on the front lines of Donetsk and Luhansk. While the Ukrainians have achieved some success in gaining control over Bakhmut and Luhansk, they remain unsatisfied and are now aiming to establish an offensive corridor stretching from the southern front lines to the peninsula. In pursuit of this objective, the Ukrainian armed forces have directed their offensive axis towards Ukraine's coastlines. Among the targeted settlements are Mariupol, Berdyansk, Melitopol, Tokmok, and Kirsten. Berdyansk, being one of the most important port cities on the Ukrainian coastline, has recently experienced highly active moments during a historic offensive operation carried out by the Ukrainians. During this offensive operation, one of the most noteworthy aspects was the use of weapon systems obtained from Western Europe. The Ukrainian army deployed Storm Shadow long-range missiles, supplied by the United Kingdom, which successfully targeted one of the main bases of the Russian Air Force in Berdyansk. This base housed 29 Ka-52 helicopters, and a total of 10 Storm Shadows were launched in the attack. The situation remains tense and volatile, with both sides heavily engaged in military actions, and Berdyansk serving as a focal point of strategic importance for the Ukrainian forces. Two weeks ago, satellites captured images of 29 Russian Ka-52 military helicopters stationed at Berdyansk airport. This development seemed to indicate that the attack on the airport had been meticulously planned by Kiev, as the intelligence about the helicopter's presence was reportedly provided by international sources. Although there are claims that the advanced British Storm Shadow missile system may have been used in the attack, this information has not yet been officially confirmed by authorities. However, considering that Storm Shadow is known to have the highest range among the Ukrainian army's missile inventory, it appears highly likely that the missiles employed in the attack were indeed UK-made Storm Shadows. The impact of these remarkable Storm Shadow attacks in Berdyansk was significant, causing great concern in Moscow. The precision-guided, long-range weapon strikes on the Kremlin's military infrastructure were seen as an ambitious and devastating move by the planners in Kiev. News and social media videos from the port city depicted six thick columns of black smoke rising from the vicinity of Berdyansk port, which had been extensively used by the Russian Air Force as a base for multiple combat helicopters since at least mid-June. Ukrainian army officials hailed the attack as a success, asserting that it had effectively destroyed Russian command and control facilities, supplies, and ammunition. However, they did not disclose the specific weapon used in the operation. According to unverified accounts from local Russians, the attacks were carried out using Storm Shadow cruise missiles, which are the longest-range precision-guided weapons supplied by the British and currently in use by Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian military sources, supported by Kremlin-linked telegram channels, have indirectly confirmed the use of Storm Shadow missiles in the attack. The distance between the possible attack locations and the Russian base in Berdyansk, which serves as the main air base for the Russian Air Force, strongly supports this data. Despite not officially announcing the use of Storm Shadow, the Ukrainian authorities seemed content to celebrate the success of the attack. Kremlin-sponsored military blogger Vladimir Rogov shared images of debris falling from a Storm Shadow missile, which was claimed to have hit Berdyansk by air defense units. However, some social media channels in Berdyansk showed a single trace over the city, indicative of an anti-aircraft missile. Despite Russian media claiming that the Ukrainian offensive in Berdyansk had failed, the situation seemed plausible as only one of the 11 Storm Shadow missiles used by the Ukrainians was shot down by Russian forces. This successful outcome is evident since, had all the Ukrainian missiles been intercepted, it would have been widely publicized in pro-Russian media channels. International sources have reported that Ukraine successfully destroyed the main Russian Air Force base in Berdyansk, along the route to Crimea. The attack is said to have caused significant damage to the Ka-52 combat helicopters stationed at the Russian base. These helicopters are equipped with long-range anti-tank missiles and have heavy armor, making them formidable adversaries for Ukrainian forces in the southern region. The appearance of the Zaporizhia sector, especially since Kiev launched its summer offensive in early June, witnessed missile attacks carried out by Ka-52 helicopters against armored and tank units of the Ukrainian armed forces on June 8. This resulted in the Ukrainian army suffering its worst tactical defeat during the summer offensive. 
The reported airstrikes led to the destruction of five German-made Leopard 2 tanks and 11 U.S.-made light tanks in the Ukrainian Army's inventory. Even Bradley infantry fighting vehicles were not spared from the strikes by the Russian Ka-52 helicopters. This heavy airstrike by Ukraine was seen as retaliation for the Russian attacks that occurred three weeks earlier, only on a much larger scale. The large presence of Russian helicopters at Berdyansk airport was extensively covered in the Ukrainian media, with satellite images of the base being released by U.S. sources in mid-June. However, the recent missile attacks in Berdyansk have effectively grounded Russian flights from the region for a certain period of time. As a result, it is expected that Moscow will not reactivate its air force in this area for a long time following the recent attacks in Berdyansk. The concern for Russia stems from the fact that on June 13, there were at least 27 Russian Air Force helicopters stationed at Berdyansk airfield, including five Ka-52 combat helicopters, nine Mi-8 or Mi-24 attack helicopters, and 13 other aircraft. The successful Ukrainian attacks have likely disrupted Russian air operations in the region and added to the worries of the Russian military. During the offensive operations, the Ukrainians managed to neutralize 29 reconnaissance and rescue helicopters at Berdyansk airport. It was claimed that the Russian war helicopters sustained damage due to the Ukrainian offensive operations. However, there have been no confirmed reports of damage to the aircraft or combat helicopters of the Russian Air Force at the airport. Access to the airbase was blocked by Russian police and security forces, as evident from social media posts about the attack. This action raised suspicions that Moscow might be concealing certain realities. If the Russian helicopters had not been damaged, it is likely that Moscow would have ordered them to retaliate against the Ukrainians from their base in Berdyansk. These potential retaliatory attacks could have posed a significant threat to Ukrainian civilians, as the Russians had previously shown a tendency for untargeted strikes. Fortunately, the expected retaliatory attacks did not occur, and the Russians became relatively quiet after the Ukrainian offensive. Moscow's concern was centered on the possibility of losing its most important combat helicopters at this airbase, as Russia's economy was not conducive to making immediate military innovations or replacements for the lost equipment on the battlefield. The scale of military losses suffered by the Russians would take considerable time to restore. Despite the challenges, the Ukrainian forces successfully targeted the airbase in Berdyansk, which is controlled by the Russians and is one of the most strategically significant regions. The success was achieved using weaponry with the required range of over 110 kilometers, enabling them to reach the airbase and neutralize the threat posed by the Russian helicopters stationed there. The Ukrainians' ability to overcome the challenges and achieve this tactical victory underscores their strategic planning and utilization of weaponry capable of engaging targets at long distances. To hit Berdyansk from the area currently controlled by the AFU, Armed Forces of Ukraine, the required range is around 120 kilometers. The Ukrainian army possesses limited locally produced and relatively faulty Krim and Tochkyu missiles, along with the modern Franco-British Storm Shadow missile, with a reported maximum range of 500 kilometers. Storm Shadow was first used by Kiev in May, with a 450-kilogram warhead, and was considered the most effective and powerful long-range attack system in their arsenal, as praised by Ukraine's defense minister Alexei Reznikov during a televised program. Initially, the UK was hesitant to approve the use of such missiles and weapon systems to target Crimea or critical Russian military installations. However, this stance changed after former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev made aggressive statements, prompting the UK Ministry of Defense to permit the use of all weapons and missile systems, including Storm Shadow, for attacking Russian military targets. With UK support, the Ukrainian forces sought to expand their offensive capabilities, and it was not coincidental that another attack took place in the same region on the same day as the earlier attacks on the main Russian base in Berdyansk. On that day, the Ukrainians targeted the Russian military headquarters and ammunition depot in the city. The stunning attack was confirmed by the Ukrainian Armed Forces Strategic Command, and Russian authorities acknowledged the attack, claiming it was successfully repelled by their air defenses. However, footage from the crash site showed a massive fire at the Russian main headquarters, where the explosions occurred after the second attack. The events highlight the escalating conflict and the use of advanced long-range missile systems in the ongoing hostilities between Ukraine and Russia.
In Berdyansk, Russian officials and supporters of Moscow are increasingly worried about the possibility of continued Ukrainian attacks. The region has been a target of previous storm shadow attacks, including a three-missile strike that hit a Russian forward helicopter refueling base near the resort village of Primorsk, resulting in the destruction of the RNR complex. The city has been subject to numerous attacks by Ukrainian forces in the past. Amidst the ongoing successful attacks by the Ukrainian forces, an unexpected visit by U.S. presidential candidate Mike Pence took place in Kiev. During his visit, Pence requested the White House administration to expedite the supply of weapons and military equipment to Ukraine. He also met with President Zelensky and highlighted the atrocities committed by Putin's army in places like Irpin, Bucha, and Mosgan. The military aid provided by the USA strengthens the Ukrainian army and allows Kiev to sustain its offensive operations. To continue the struggle for freedom, continuous and timely military support is crucial for the Ukrainian forces. While the USA has taken action and announced new aid packages for Ukraine, it's important to note that the Ukrainian army faces limitations in terms of armored vehicles and missiles. The use of serious armored vehicles and storm shadow missiles during the approximately one-month offensive has depleted the stocks. It's estimated that between 50 to 100 storm shadow missiles have been consumed so far, and ammunition is not unlimited. Given the significance of storm shadow and its effectiveness in the Ukrainian army's operations, it is vital for ongoing support and replenishment of essential equipment to ensure they can continue to effectively repel Russian forces and maintain their struggle for freedom. In July, according to Ukraine's deputy defense minister, the U.S.-supplied Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle demonstrated its capability by defeating two Russian T-72 tanks. The main armament of the Bradley includes an M242 25mm automatic gun, a 7.62mm machine gun, and a TOW, tube-launched, optically-tracked, wireless-guided, anti-tank missile launcher, among other weapons. According to the translation of the new Voice of Ukraine, after a Ukrainian automatic shelling killed Russian soldiers, the Russian forces claimed that the introduction of two T-72 tanks on the battlefield was genuine. Hannah Mellier, the deputy defense minister, acknowledged the valiant efforts of the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade, which included crucial figures such as Gunner Primera, BMP Commander Katch, and the driver mechanic public. Despite the Bradley's small caliber cannons, it possesses powerful anti-armor capabilities due to the deployment of anti-tank missiles and the incorporation of depleted uranium rounds with increased penetrating strength into its guns. The Ukrainian military is well aware that Western weaponry draws the attention of the adversary. As soon as the Bradley comes on the front lines, the Russians unleash all of their firepower, from grenade launchers to artillery and attack helicopters, said Melier. As of July 7, the U.S. had committed a total of 186 Bradley IFVs to Ukraine, with the first arriving no later than April, according to a Ukrainian Ministry of Defense tweet. The swift and robust armored vehicle is not a tank, but it has earned the nickname, Tank Killer, for its ability to take on enemy tanks while also being capable of transporting troops. According to the Dutch open-source weapons tracking website, Oryx, Ukraine appears to have lost or damaged 35 Bradleys this month, a significant portion of which were Western-donated equipment. The Bradley, known for providing fire support and heavy anti-tank capabilities, is a major target for Russian forces. Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister, Malier, stated that the Bradley outmaneuvered Russian infantry from both flanks and successfully destroyed enemy positions with its automatic cannon. The Russian response was to launch a full-fledged hunt for the Ukrainian Bradleys, deploying two T-72 tanks, both of which were quickly decommissioned by the expert use of the Bradleys' powerful TOW anti-tank missiles. Earlier reports from CNN's Austin analyst suggested that Ukraine had lost 16 Bradley IFVs during the initial days of the counteroffensive. However, the Kiev authorities have not officially commented on the scale of equipment losses since the April transfer of American M2 Bradley fighting vehicles to Ukraine. Many Western sources have visually confirmed that at least one-third of the vehicles have been abandoned, damaged, or destroyed. Previous reports, including one from the New York Times, highlighted the 30% loss of Bradleys from Ukraine's Western-trained 47th Mechanized Brigade in just two weeks in early June. During this time, the vehicles faced significant casualties in combat, particularly when engaging German-supplied Leopard 2 tanks. 
Despite Washington's pledge to continue supplying new Bradleys to Ukraine and eventually supplement them with M1 and M2 Abrams tanks, the future of armed supplies to Ukraine depends heavily on the success of its new offensives. The Bradley vehicles have not been produced for nearly 30 years, but their reputation is unlikely to significantly impact America's arms export profile. As a result, a fresh $800 million military aid package for Ukraine, revealed earlier this month by the Joe administration, is expected to provide crucial support to Ukraine's ongoing efforts. The Biden administration's decision to include 32 more Bradleys in its inventory comes despite the fact that the U.S. already has hundreds of these vehicles, which were mass-produced in the final decade of the Cold War. The development of the Bradley was challenging and turbulent as the U.S. aimed to create a turreted troop-carrying platform in response to the new Soviet BMP-1 infantry fighting vehicle. Over time, the concept evolved from a simple replacement for the M-113 armored personnel carrier into an uneasy compromise between a tank and an armored troop battle taxi, making its genuine battlefield role somewhat difficult to define. The M-2 variant of the Bradley provides cross-country mobility, mounted weaponry, communications, and protection to mechanized infantry, as well as overwatch support. It incorporates an independent viewer for the commander, allowing the commander to scan for targets and maintain situational awareness while staying protected behind armor without interfering with the gunner's ability to engage targets. Under the Bradley Engineering Change Proposal, ECP, program, platform modifications have been made, including an upgraded engine and transmission, improved track, twin-pen torsion bars, road arms, and shock absorbers. The M7 vehicle, also known as the Bradley Fire Support Team, FIST, is equipped with the Fire Support Sensor System, FS3. It serves as an integrated Bradley-based fire support platform that enables company fire support teams and fire support officers to plan, coordinate, and execute accurate indirect artillery and mortar support. Despite the existing inventory of Bradleys, the Biden administration's decision to acquire more of these vehicles underscores their continued relevance and importance in modern warfare scenarios. The versatile capabilities of the Bradley make it a valuable asset for the U.S. military, especially when providing support to mechanized infantry and executing precise fire support missions on the battlefield. The Bradley Fire Support Team, FIST, provides a range of capabilities, including real-time fires, automation, enhanced surveillance, target acquisition, identification, designation, tracking, position location, and communications functionality. It serves both mounted on the armor as well as dismounted, allowing for target acquisition and designation in both scenarios. The M7 variant of the Bradley Fist can accommodate four Fist personnel, and it is equipped with a 25mm automatic cannon and a 7.62 coaxial machine gun among its weaponry. As part of the Bradley Engineering Change Proposal, ECP, program, planned upgrades include an improved engine and transmission, enhanced track, twin-pen torsion bars, road arms, and shock absorbers. In the context of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February, Poland has been providing significant military and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. Daily trains carrying guns and supplies enter Ukraine through the Polish border gates, making Poland a crucial supporter of Ukraine's needs. Russia places greater emphasis on military help from Poland to Ukraine compared to aid from Western Europe, primarily because of Poland's direct border with Ukraine, allowing for prompt transportation of critical necessities. Train lines from Poland to Ukraine are vital in delivering this assistance, and as a result, Russia has shown concerns over Poland's support to Ukraine's military and humanitarian demands. Reportedly, there were preparations for attacks on these essential supply trains, indicating Russia's efforts to disrupt the delivery of crucial aid to Ukraine. These actions highlight the significance of Poland's role in supporting Ukraine during the ongoing conflict and demonstrate Russia's attempts to undermine this vital assistance. Russia has been engaging in a new sabotage campaign to disrupt vital Western support lines for Ukraine. Moscow allegedly recruited a significant number of agents to prepare for attacks on rail links connecting Poland and Ukraine, as well as trains delivering weapons and humanitarian aid. The main objective of this Russian-created spy gang was to obstruct Poland's logistics efforts toward supporting Ukraine. However, Poland managed to thwart the massive spy operation orchestrated by Russia. 
Polish authorities recently revealed that they successfully dismantled the network of Russian spies who were gathering intelligence on Polish military locations and key infrastructure, with the intention of executing sabotage operations against railways used to transport supplies to Ukraine. This operation resulted in the arrest of 15 saboteur members, making it the largest Russian spy ring in Polish history. The apprehended agents were monitoring Polish military bases, ports, and crucial rail infrastructure. Those arrested, including Russian, Belarusian, and Ukrainian nationals, face up to 10 years in prison according to Polish authorities. Notably, among the suspects was a professional Russian ice hockey player, who was allegedly involved in gathering intelligence on important infrastructure. The Russians established this espionage network in early 2023, and it was set up with the intention of causing disruptions to the flow of support from Poland to Ukraine. The successful dismantling of this spy ring is a significant blow to Russia's attempts to interfere with vital supply routes and assistance to Ukraine during the ongoing conflict. Earlier this year, details emerged about Moscow's direct supervision of a spy network, with agents allegedly being paid in cryptocurrency for their completed tasks. The members of this Russian-ordered spy network were tasked not only with gathering information, images, and specific details about military and civilian facilities but also with spreading anti-Ukrainian and anti-NATO sentiments. Additionally, they were expected to plan acts of sabotage. Russian operatives were rewarded with more money, including cryptocurrency, for performing bold activities. This cryptocurrency reward could be converted into cash. Poland has been successful in apprehending several Russian spies in recent months. In total, they have arrested 27 Russian agents, effectively dismantling the Russian spy network in the country. In April, Polish officials arrested three more Russian agents who were allegedly planning to harm a shipment of supplies destined for Ukraine. The three suspects were detained during the preparations for their intended act of sabotage. Prosecutors in the eastern Polish city of Loveland accused them of working for foreign intelligence against Poland. Furthermore, Polish authorities recently detained nine people suspected of collaborating with Russian intelligence. As part of their ongoing investigation into the spy ring, Polish investigators are searching bridges and overpasses on important highways to Ukraine for surveillance equipment. With the successful dismantling of the Russian spy network in Poland, military supply trains to Ukraine will now be able to travel freely without interference from the spies. Poland's actions have dealt a significant blow to Russian intelligence operations aimed at disrupting support to Ukraine during the ongoing conflict. Since February 24, 2022, the Warsaw government and the Polish police force have deported nearly 400 Russian diplomats from European countries on spying allegations, with dozens more being arrested. Intelligence and espionage play critical roles in today's warfare, and while Vladimir Putin is a former agent, Poland's war against Russia goes beyond just dismantling Moscow's spy network. It also involves discovering a fully mobilized civil society. In Poland, signs of support for Ukraine are evident. The Polish National Bank's windows display blue and yellow, alongside Ukrainian flags flying beside Polish flags above the University of Warsaw's wrought iron gates. Donations for Ukraine's military efforts are stacking up, and nighttime concerts are being organized to raise funds for the Eastern cause. According to Slavomir Dipsky, a historian and director of the Polish Institute of International Affairs, who advises the Polish government, there is widespread public awareness and solidarity towards Ukraine. An electronic billboard in the city center depicts the legendary response of a Ukrainian border guard to an approaching Russian naval onslaught, symbolizing the unity in resisting Russian aggression. Polish Prime Minister, Mateusz Morawiecki, along with two other Central European leaders, traveled to Kiev on March 20, 2022, to meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, showing Poland's strong support for Ukraine during the early stages of Russia's invasion. Polish President, Andrzej Duda, also expressed solidarity with Ukraine by visiting the beleaguered capital during the heroic march in Kiev. The Polish public, usually reticent about discussing politics, now stands united against Russia, believing that Putin's intentions involve establishing a new security architecture where Russia can use blackmail and force to compel its neighbors. Poland's stance on supporting Ukraine and countering Russian aggression underscores its commitment to defending democracy and the sovereignty of neighboring nations. The country remains steadfast in its determination to stand with Ukraine during these challenging times. 
The issue of dealing with Russia's aggression and potential demands for concessions has become a significant concern for neighboring countries and beyond. Polls indicate that countries must face and overcome this issue, or else it could lead to even greater trouble in the future. Western European countries, concerned about energy security and nuclear issues, have hoped for a ceasefire. However, surveys show that most of Central and Eastern Europe, from Finland to Ukraine, do not believe that they would be safe from a potential defeat by Russia anytime soon. As a result, Poland's role in European security strategy has gained prominence. Poland's role as a security element on NATO's eastern flank is not entirely new, it has been since joining the alliance in 1999. The country's strategic location and unprecedented economic growth have enabled it to finance rapid modernization and expansion of its armed forces. Poland has become a vital partner in European humanitarian efforts during Russia's offensive against Ukraine, welcoming more Ukrainian refugees than any other European country since the invasion began. The country has provided various benefits to these refugees, including access to health, education, and job opportunities, with over 1.5 million Ukrainian refugees registered by Polish authorities in the past year. As a crucial military ally, Poland has sent significant military assistance to Ukraine, including hundreds of tanks and essential armaments. Poland plays a critical role in facilitating the logistical operation to transfer international military aid to Ukraine, allowing a global coalition of countries to supply the Ukrainian army with weapons, equipment, and ammunition. Beyond its security and humanitarian contributions, Poland stands as a model of Western-style democracy and has experienced remarkable growth since 1989, making it one of the former Eastern Bloc's most successful transition stories. With its robust support for Ukraine and active involvement in regional security, Poland has assumed a crucial role in shaping European responses to Russia's aggression and securing the stability and sovereignty of its neighbors. Poland's remarkable economic expansion, driven by market liberalization, transformed the country from a centrally planned to a free market economy, often referred to as a miracle. Today, Poland aims to share its military and economic growth with Ukraine, demonstrating its commitment to supporting its neighbor in various areas. The efforts of the Warsaw government are appreciated by countries worldwide, with the United States being one of the leading providers of military assistance to both Poland and Ukraine. As the winter months arrived, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine continued unabated, with neither side showing signs of slowing down. The strategic advantages gained by Ukraine just before winter, along with some benefits offered by winter conditions, prompted additional maneuvers in the region. One of the most intense battles occurred in Kazan, where the Ukrainian armed forces mounted a well-prepared counteroffensive, forcing Russian troops to withdraw to the east bank of the Dnieper River. Controlling the Dnieper River became critical for both sides, as it serves as a reinforcement corridor from Zaporizhia to Crimea. The Ukrainian armed forces successfully took control of the western bank of Kirsten, rendering Russian ships and boats unable to navigate the river. This development disrupted a quick path between Zaporizhia and Crimea, leading the Russian army to fortify captured regions and prepare for city clashes in Melitopol and Zaporizhia. In response to the Ukrainian anti-ship missile Neptune damaging the Black Sea Fleet flagship Moskva near Snake Island, the Russian Navy faced significant losses. The Ukrainian armed forces' strong retaliation resulted in the loss of 17 warships by the Russian Navy, including the 17th ship on the Dnieper River in the direction of Tavria on January 10. The strategic importance of Balabrative Island in the Dnieper River was evident, as it provided control over the passage of the Black Sea. The Ukrainian armed forces demonstrated their capability to attack Balabrative Island from the cities of Valencia and Naprovsky outside the core of Kherson. These developments reflect the ongoing intensity of the conflict and the strategic significance of controlling key locations and waterways in the region.